no public input. Correspondent and announcements, Megan, do you have anything? No, I don't either. Meeting minutes from April 25th. Everybody have a chance to read them? Discussion, any questions? All in favor of accepting the minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 One abstention. Thanks for returning, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are. Oh, well, Robin, welcome. Thank you. Okay, Strikers report to you. Everybody get them today? Yeah, I yeah. have a good test. Mm -hmm. Yes. A little late, so I hope I can fix. But um, one thing I do want to just tell, tell everybody is, is if you look at the uh, look at the uh, coverage report, you will notice that it is uh, somewhere over fifty thousand dollars more than the uh, beginning balance. There's a there. It, it's an error that was there from the, the last month, which I. Right, it in one place, but it didn't follow through. So that it says that it's over by fifteen thousand one hundred ten dollars and seven cents, which is the ARPA grant. So um, I, I apologize for that. We'll get this all figured out. The the actual amount of money that is in the that account is at thirty nine thousand four hundred seventy nine dollars and forty one cents. That's the actual. I apologize. Not a correction about. Um, make a motion to accept the treasurer's report. Second, John. All in favor? So, so, I, yes. Okay. agenda is the chairman update. I would like to table this uh, until after the director's report, if that's agreeable with the board. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe we want it after the finance committee, correct? Um, so further, further, later in the agenda. Later in the agenda. Thank you. Want it after finance committee or after the board? I haven't decided yet. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of under way because I need I need something from Megan's computer. So I, I, I have it up. So Good. if Thank it comes to work, someone can share it. Yeah. All right. All right. Um. So, um. Okay. Let me pull up the. Any questions on the statistics? We're done. Ready for you? Okay. So first of all, 
I have to say that I'm staggered by the statistics. I think they're phenomenal, but you know, show all these trends and so forth. So my only question, going through all the numbers and so forth, is do you see any trends that are developing that you think might be post-COVID? All businesses are examining where they're at before COVID and after COVID. Can you look at the case and say, is jumping out at you that says, I think this is a fundamental change that's going to continue, or do you think it's all going to eventually level up? That's um, programming. I think that if you look, the one area where you're not seeing those dramatic jumps back yeah. up is the door counter. Right. Um, that could be an issue with our door counter, which we're looking into. Um, our data is outdated. But it's also programming. We were getting in nearly three times as many people as people in these programs, and people are finding comfortable with experience from home. And even though COVID is winding down, <laughs> people are behaving as if it is winding down. Um, I don't think everyone's running back in when it's a tenant owner. So I think it's going to change what we do in the next year or two, knowing that our space is going to get, we don't need a room for 75 people because we can only 25 of them are going to attend online. They will attend the entire location. So you're seeing a trend that people continue with, let's say, online as opposed to coming physically into the library. Yes. Because they're shopping at home, not children. Right? Yes. Because I think programming is for children. It does. Um, we don't offer any hybrid for children, uh, but we are slowly getting kids back in. Um, part of it just is capacity. Our kids mind being on top of each other and children climbing over each other in the story time. Now we're much more cognizant of our space and where children need to have the room. Um, so that's going to be a little slower to come back. Um, but clearly, we are getting our kids back up. They're not going to be sitting in the same place. Right. Well, some criticism, I think, that I just think there's a fundamental change that's occurring. The question is what's going to be permanent and what's going to actually fundamentally change. It's happening all across business, too. We all know that all across business is a change. But it's interesting. The great thing is you have the number to look at it. Yeah. It's a lot less very telling. You know, that's the excitement of the circulation. And the, obviously, the digital assets are, are just continuing to go like this, as well as a lot of the other stuff. I mean, the kids program looks like it's exploding. I mean, the books and everything else. I mean, you look at the numbers, the kids stuff looks like crazy, right? Well, I think the kids stuff is too the fact that staff are being proactive in making these plays, putting books front and center. So that way, when parents are checking out, there's stuff there for kids to grab. So I think that's part of that change is more the staff has been actively putting on materials for the kids to use. I have a question about the program. Also, it's been convenient for us too. We're able to get programs into schools who may not be able to subscribe to. So, so we've had people, I believe, like we have a tax program this week. Uh, behaviorist. We had that like two weeks ago. Did it address the ecosystem? I'll look for you afterwards. Um, but that's a program I We also encourage children to pick up more books. I remember years ago yeah. when we had a limit of how many books we checked out and could pick and more to go with them. We encourage them. I watched the nurse check out. Books. Oh, it's just yeah. people walk out with stacks yeah. of books. It's Not, wonderful. It's like, yeah, it's great to see yeah. what happens with children's programs. Just look at long trends within the business and track so much. It's like, what's going to stick? What's going to change? Yeah, well, I think we're, we're, a year, we're a good six months away from what the growth counter does. Yeah, I think exactly. you know, we have to get through the summer before we can get those growth conditions. Yeah, I, I would say that that's, that's, I would agree with that. I know for us at uh, AARP, we, we go 
original back supply program, but then the opportunity rate went up, so we had to cancel like a, a whole school year and reschedule it. So at this point, you know, we were trying to make some decisions as well about how do we balance staff with volunteers and what do we go out and what do we not do? And basically, um, what we come up with is just you're, you're just going to proceed as though it's the same. And this will be our first summer. Yeah, the story circles outside. Yeah, so I, I think this is the summer where we're going to see what what trends return and which ones stay. Thanks so much. Yeah, I have summer reading program. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I'll go over that. Thank you. Okay. Any questions on the spending report? Think we're going to end up the year pretty much at a zero balance or uh, looking that out right now. Uh, we just had a few thousand point, but we also had our COVID return that went out that was like zero or like a little bit over a year, and then we had a little bit of a year right now. So, um, Tom was the one I to speak for me to go through the budget to figure out where we are. And <clears throat> but we really have to get the we wanted to get all the summer reading stuff plotted out first to see where we are. Okay, so then okay, so we have interviewed four candidates so far for any position. We have one more left to interview. About a week. Uh, we will be taking down the job announcement tomorrow. I feel that the three of the four candidates we've interviewed are pretty strong, so I'm very happy with that. And we don't want to wait too long because we don't want to uh, lose things. Uh, but definitely, as you said, the candidates' jobs are popping up all over the place. Uh, there are a lot of openings. We we'll have a lot of negotiating power now, so we want to get this done. And I will be on vacation the last two weeks. So I really want our position to be may not filled, but hired and contract high in the next few days. So we've been trying to spruce up the room a little bit since we reopened. Um, you know, listening to patrons about concerns that some people may have required a meeting area, uh, which is a bit of a challenge to put back in place because we reconfigured the second floor when we closed the public. So we were able to move furniture figure what it's going to fit in. So they're <clears throat> slowly working our way back to where we were before. Uh, we're timing it with the team furniture, so that way we'll be moving a lot of things at once and we'll have people in here to help us. Uh, so we'll spend that time just keeping an eye on whatever happens. But in the meantime, uh, we put some shades in. We come back out now and that's just going to be really great. Um, if the patrons are happy with that, we might do more at the windows. It is a very affordable solution to uh, the problem of very bright, very boring windows in this downtown area. Um, one of the reasons we had liked in the first place uh, was that we could not sit there for a lot of the afternoon. We really didn't want that very much. Well. Um, you know, I think a lot of people walk around town, they walk to the library, they have lunch, and then they come here and they sit down with the paper. And you know, you're sitting in the sun and it's really warm. <laughs> so we tended to pre COVID have a lot of sleepers <laughs> after lunchtime, which never bothered anybody. We didn't mind as long as we could hear from sleeping. Um, <laughs> but during COVID, it, it was something we had to bring. And we're not looking to bring it back, but we do want to bring back a comfortable way to sit. Because right now, when you come off the elevator at the top of the stairs, that's where the seating is. Uh, the computer is a little quiet. Uh, so we're looking to 
new center. We have applied for a grant uh, to replace the adult seating, which we did not get. Um, but we do have options to follow the procedure of the next couple of months to bring this forward to the Um And if you have to go up there, you should be one of the state chairs. It's had such a struggle because everybody loves the egg chairs, but yeah. not everyone gets out of the egg oh. chairs. <laughs> so we need to find the balance. Um, so actually, the company we're using, the, or the design company we're using for the seating project, they delivered a couple of chairs upstairs. Um, sure. For us to try it. Yes, we have them for a couple more days. So if you're at the meeting, don't find a couple of stairs. Um, they are fabric because we want them to absorb the cast. Um, a lot of the team furniture coming in is hybrid essential fabric. People's teams are left mm -hmm. and we need ways to deal with that as well as the seating. Um, and mm -hmm. there's other stuff. Okay. Yeah, so one of the complaints, well not complaints, the comments we receive with the fabric's a little stretchy, but it is because it's designed to hold the hell with liquid and it's designed to be easy to clean dirt off of. Um, so we want it like that. If we've got a bunch of stuff there, no, well, <laughs> we also don't want something that's going to pill easily or be difficult to clean. Um, we have a spot in the machine to take care of stains. So we feel that this is a good solution, um, but it's not the softest for material. But over time, it will wear and feel more comfortable. We also didn't go with high backs in the bomb. We didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. So they're lower, and I think that um, some people do prefer the high back for the comfort of sleeping. It's just a it's relaxing. I think that's one reason. Egg chairs are pretty popular. Yeah, that's true. Kind of but you can cocoon it in. Yes. And those were nice because those absorb sound too, the way yeah. the back is designed. Yeah. Um, but we did have patrons who saw those and were very concerned for them too. And they were like, oh, this is not the right size. They never sat them, but they were not happy with the idea that those might end up under the side of the hallway mm -hmm. So Does that how low they are? Because how low, and also too, it's a look aesthetics. So trying to balance out. Do not mind what you will choose. I might staff out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so the lockers. Um, the lockers have been uh, utilized. It's We're learning how to pull statistics from it right now. We were able to get one paper. Um, but we had people calling the week before we started with asking for a little pickup and reminding mm -hmm. that it was way week. Um, the first weekend we had it open, I saw three people in two people in a matter of 15 minutes outside of our building using lockers. So we're getting a lot of positive feedback. We've had no complaints on them so far. Fantastic. So we're very happy about that. And um, so we'll see what happens next month. I'm going to start pulling that into our report so we can see what kind of statistics we can get. Yeah. <laughs> so for the team grant, <laughs> we got the, um, the fund from Diane very much helped. We got the funding situation sorted. We have the $75,000 now. We <coughs> made the um, project lab where we can save equipment. We got the bulk of that ordered. So the one of the uh, 3D printers is here. The TV stand is here. The glow porch um, laser engraver is here. So half the equipment has come in. We're waiting on the PS5 bundle. Um, and one more 3D printer, and then what will happen next is we need to purchase all the materials for it. So filaments, um, engraving materials, um, things like that. Uh, headphones for the PS5 so we don't have people on the seating area. Um, so that will be done in the next two weeks. So is the PS5 an actual PlayStation? Do you have to do it here and get it in? Um, the objective of the grant is to create a place for teens to interact and socialize and get them a wander around town. Right. Um, one of our staff members will be using them for the living equipment to see how it will work out. We had a big positive response, and what's nice is they're developing relationships with the staff and then starting to attend other programs. So it's really become a marketing tool for getting them in and getting them other programs. Are there time limits and stuff? Right now, it's a program we run once a week for an hour. Mainly because it is standalone equipment. Um, but we have to work out the full details on what will happen beyond that. Right now, in the summer, we have um, meeting on Mondays and meeting on Fridays.
way that my purse was going. And uh, furniture. So we have all the furniture ordered. We are overspent on furniture by roughly $4,000. And we did that for a reason. We had the money that we had set aside for um, second floor renovation. And, um, and we had library operations money. We overspent because we cannot guarantee everything will arrive by June 30th. And we saved the set. And we don't, if it's not, we have to take up the funds. Their feeling was that you're getting another $75,000 July 1st, so you'll be able to cover the cost. But we don't want to return funds. It's never a good idea to return grant funds. Um, you're less likely to win a grant later on if you do that. Um, we're running into some supply chain issues, so we've had to be very diligent um, in the purchasing and working with the vendors to make sure that what we ordered was not a custom purchase, uh, make sure that fabric and vinyl were in stock. So we've had to go back and forth quite a bit over the last two weeks. Tom put a lot of time into working with the client to make sure that we were getting the right um, fabric and materials lined up. So we've been assured much as they can assure us there's always that possibility that something will not be in time. So I think that was fine to be able to do that. And yet we have the money coming in July one. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. we can ask credit cards, right? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna take a loan. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So I was hoping to have a furniture presentation for you today. However, over the last two weeks we had to make a lot of changes. So I have a draft but not a final presentation. Um, but when I have that done I'll send that off to a friend and she will post it for you. Summer reading. We're in the process of getting all the school visits set up. Uh, this year we're doing Barry, Rockwell, and Johnson. We're not going to do the middle school this year. Um, it's a bit more than we can handle moving on, being down a full timer, um, and training two new part timers. So, but we, we, I met with um, the media specialist for the high school and for um, the digital coordinator for the school district. And uh, we went over summer reading plans, um, what they were hoping that we'd be able to do for them and what we were hoping they'd be able to do for us. So they're gonna be promoting our program through all of the schools and sending out all of our promotional materials and reloading, making sure that we have all of the customer reading materials that are available to students. So good, so good. Yeah. Well, so it's great that awesome. we have such a good relationship with yeah. them. Um, awesome. So, yep. So we will start going uh, May 31st after Memorial Day. It'll take us about two and a half weeks to see every class. Um, part of that is on our actual staffing. The other part is they have to be able to pay for employees and things like that. So we have to work around. So you actually visit every class, or do they gather like the whole first grade? No, nope. nope. we visit. Every class, when they have to double up, I usually go and do double up classes because it's it's very hard managing 45 and 50 kids. Um, and we've developed such a great relationship um, that it's a great opportunity for the media specialist because it gives us time to get organized. So we oftentimes end up taking over the whole class. So we'll do our presentation and then we'll do an activity and it gets through everything very quickly because it's very organized. So that way, they also get to spend time with us, and when they come in, they recognize us, and they're really excited. So, you know, it benefits us. But this year, um, Miss Bailey, who is a part of my teacher, so she will be doing double classes. Um, and Tom will be going with her this year. So she's going to ask if you go. If you do need help, I can always come and help. I can't because I'm a certified teacher. I understand, but with the schools, we can't send volunteers to do oh, the work of yeah. doing the back and forth. Okay, perfect. So, however, um, this is a great chance for lots of staff to get out of the building and participate in this, and it gets, you know, they all get excited to see you. So are they required to do that, or do they volunteer? Some staff are required to, but some are not allowed to. So this year we have Bailey going, Claire going, uh, Tom will be doing some, Alexandra will be doing Is. And it's good to have the more staff members that go, the more recognizable 
Facebook that is. Yes. So yes. it's more chance of a child coming in to recognize their staff member as opposed to having one staff member. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's a really long day. It's the same as one person. <coughs> so it's no one can break it up. So in the past, I've signed people with specific days. <coughs> but this year, I've broken it up into more two-hour and three-hour increments. Because last year, especially coming out of school, it was strange. Um, and remember, when you get to the younger grades, you have a lot of kids who've never actually been in a preschool environment or school environment, and it's their first year. So they tend to have struggles still to fit the bill at the end of the year or to be part of the group. So last year it was exhausting. So we're going to break up. <laughs> you know, I'm curious because we want the staff to love doing it too. They burn out. No, so I'd rather prioritize breaking it up and bringing in people from time to help out than leaving it all up to the, the people. And because we have to double the classes too, it's not like we send one person and they do class, class, class. It's two people, two different classes, because we also can't always get them into the same room. Mm -hmm. So it is a, <coughs> it's a bit of a juggling act. So my last thing, actually, did anybody have any questions before I move on to the last one? I have one. You said you were doing gaming night. Do they have to have a library card to do gaming night? No, it's a game, it's a game, it's a game story. I know. Story, but it's a game story. Gaming story time. Um, it's, oh. you just, like any other program, you just sign up for the program and you come and the kids play together and they can choose their game. <laughs> on the, on the, uh, on the gaming system yes. or on the PlayStation. Yes. Oh, they play against each other. Yeah, so we use the Again, Magic Lab. And do they need a library card to do that? You don't need library cards for any of those programs. Okay. No, I told you I would talk about it and I didn't. So, um, so like the um, team grant, yeah. we had to accept the funds before getting any real clarification as to what it is. Um, so they want to focus on teams and they want to focus on the digital divide. So we explained to them that every team in the school district has a digital device. They already have access to the Wi-Fi here, so this we have to get a little creative. So I met with um, Tom and Kelly, and we talked about what this would mean. So Tom would like to purchase a um, laptop cart and allow us to run programs with teams throughout the building in their private lab with the laptop. So that's the current request. It, we we still don't know if we if it meets their criteria, but based on our Starting conversation that we're thinking about, we find out this week. Um, but what's nice about it with this too is it gives us more flexibility. Having your stations that are only in two locations, it costs less space. So by having the ability to reduce the number of computer stations and hand out laptops instead, it means that we have more flex space that we can use for as needed. Um, and we want to move the logic lab upstairs. The base downstairs was good for our original purpose, but we have a lot more equipment now because of the team grant, and we have a lot more space. So we want to flip the technical services area upstairs from the project lab and use that area downstairs, but create a staff space where we can still work with our new engineers. So if you have to do a So if any of you have been back to the project lab, that's the square, with all the way upstairs. So, yeah, so we would do is turn that into an actual project where the staff computers would be working on news, processing equipment, and then we could flip that space so that we have the painted, but also have a space that staff can go in and have meetings together or where processing needs to be done, uh, computers need to be upgraded, updated, things like that. Um, because the other thing is, some of you might know, we have a three, two 3D printers running and a laser engraver. We have we need a window to be able to exhaust. Yeah. So we do have air we purchased air filters with the equipment, but they still have a little room for having a larger space and having windows. So this will allow us to do that because the Sealy has windows that are quite old, they need to be able to open, they need to be able to close. Um, and in this way too, where people would be able to store more equipment in one location. And what would be nice is it's right off. It's on the second floor, so we can have a staff member available to supervise anyone who wanted to use it, so people could come in and use it without it being part of a program. So if you needed to use a Cricut cutter, you could schedule a time to use a Cricut cutter. It wouldn't have to be during a program. Um, and then also, too, it is the 
was the weekend area, so teams would be able to flow in and out, and this code was came from team grips. We want to make sure teams have access to all of this. So holding it up here is super desirable. We had talked about doing it a few years down the road as we develop the project lab, but uh, we feel like it should be accessible to teams as long as we put it. So for all of the, I mean, I love the equipment coming in, but what's the actual plan to like start offering It's, it's an ambitious goal to staff, um, but feel, we feel like it's temporary to do. Um, we do, and to, um, the next step would be doing some software purchasing, so that way we can start offering digital design classes, um, getting more hands-on with the printers, letting teams as well as operate some of this equipment, and not just doing the design of the project and not getting to be part of the creation. Um, and that's really important because the first half of the grant, the first year is really about equipment and creating the environment. The second half of the grant needs to be now about the program and the interaction. So that's why September is the goal. Um, and we're ahead on tagging, so that helps a lot. Yes. Um, our staff is very competitive. <laughs> we are we are done with children except for media. Uh, speaking of trends, this is statistics. Uh, media is not our bread and butter anymore. Uh, DVD circulation, audio book circulation, I think it's just it's down, but so is spending. Because if you think about it, like if you see something on a streaming service, there's no guarantee it's coming out on DVD. And it could be a year before it does come out on DVD. So if it's seeing more people asking for more obscure titles than uh, popular shows and movies that come out. How's Canopy? Canopy, uh, we have about 20 to 30 registrants right now. We spent probably about $50. So, but like any any um, digital service we introduce, it takes about a year until we start to get. Uh, yeah. Well, we're our plan is in the fall to use it to uh, stream movies. Yeah. So for the summer, because the summer we want to do light and fun, um, we're just showing uh, blockbuster movies. But come the fall, we'd like to show some of the foreign films, some of the independents, which you can get off the canopy, and because we have a movie license through the state. We can use that to show movies from Canopy. And that'd be a great way for us to promote Canopy and people to come to the movies. I think what you said is a trend that you really heard was that a lot of people have Netflix or Amazon Prime or something else. So some stuff that we can physically do fast, but we see in our own homes with the smart TV. But for Canopy, maybe it's a little bit different. It has like documentaries and indie films and stuff like that. It has a broad appeal to people, but they just don't see it like they want to watch. We still have people asking for HFS, so we're having a hard time <laughs> getting people to accept we can do nothing about Encore and jump over the counter. But it was me. I was one of you too, so I'm very sympathetic to anybody complaining, so unfortunately, no leverage on that. Um, so, yeah, so that is the current plan for the ECMP grant is for laptops and charging stations, because really the charging station is probably the most important part. Because there's nothing worse than having, you know, at home when you have your, your phone and your laptop and your e-reader and they're all plugged into outlets. The last thing they want is 12 laptops pulled about. Mm -hmm. um, with a charging station, they all slide into one cabinet and that cabinet gets plugged into a wall. So that way. Mm -hmm. That's what my story is. Yeah. Yeah, and it's such a lifesaver. So that's, cool, that's yeah. a big part of our, our commercial plan. And so those would be, instead of buying more computers, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yes, we could. That would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. board, what? Game yeah. night. Oh, I'm yeah. utterly yeah. dreadful at video games. <laughs> so my last I thing would be thing. Video games. <laughs> um, farmers markets. We really want to go back. We'd love some volunteers. It would be the Saturdays again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice one. We'd probably do one or two a month between June and August, depending on staffing. So we would do we send one staff member and possibly
be a volunteer or a board member. It would be um, a sat would be one or two Saturdays in June, July, and August. Probably one in August, depending on if all the places are open. Um, and then it would be from uh, 9.30 to 1 o'clock. July and August are the busiest months. Well, I'm, that's why I'm thinking two in July, but the problem is the staff that has some staff members. Well, June is not so big. July, I'm just telling you. Yeah. Kristen keeps all the statistics from years past of when we did well and when we did not okay. do well, so we kind of based off of that. Um, but also, too, is I only have so many people that sign up Saturday. People don't sign up for extra Saturdays. Um, so typically it has to be the people who are able to supervise the year. How would we actually do it? Well, Chris. Yeah, it was for you, except I worked that. Oh, Kristen was really hoping you'd be back. <laughs> I think we could, some, some of us could take just one yeah. 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 yeah, I don't need someone to commit to all. That would work. I mean, that's the busiest time. Yeah, um, all right, so I'll sign you up for one. I'll sign you the date to let me know. <laughs> and tell us what it was yeah. like and what you actually did.
to the park here overnight. So every so often we go to the town to see if people have left any things. We don't call just if someone wants to park here like for hours. They have to go through some stuff like that. Um, and then they already spent. No, no, we just have we have people who live in the apartment. Oh, okay. So I think it's going to be a good issue. Oh, oh definitely. We, we are, this is a lot of apartments. It's a lot of apartments. And there's a, it's a restaurant. I mean, you know, we live off the street. We walk my wife and I walk to the house on Sundays. This place is packed. There's not a parking yep. place over there. There's not a parking place over there. There's not a parking place over there. Before the street. Thank you. Okay. Another visual along those same lines, what we were discussing is maybe if we did some parking on Mary, did you find out what we have to do? Are you just going to text me and let me know when you're done, like we talked about? Stay there. You should be able to get right back on when we're finished. But if you, I can text you if you want to be able to walk around. No, I'm, that's okay. I can wait. She's fine. She's in the meeting. She doesn't have to. Oh, yeah. She's just not yeah. going to record it. Yeah. So it'll be live. So she'll be live without recording. We'll just start recording afterwards. Okay. I see All right. I see her. You don't, I don't think you have to go off. Okay. 
finance committee uh, makes a, a, a recommendation, motion for a recommendation to the board for a 3% increase for non-union salaries. I'd like to make a motion to accept that. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. And I would like to bring a motion to the board. I would like to make a motion that we increase the director's vacation time to four weeks, effective July 1. So moved. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> second. You get the first. You get the first and second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any discussion? <laughs> <laughs> uh, any discussion? Good. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Unanimous support. So. Thank, you. Thank you, board members. I really appreciate that. I have a dream of traveling someday. <laughs> <laughs> With atrophy? <laughs> yeah, sure. Any other issues to come before the board? Motion to adjourn. We make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We second it at 7.20. Oh my God. Uh, that's all right. Sorry about that. <laughs>